it's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and pass the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. This first scenario is based on the EHR case study. One of EHR's healthcare customers is an internationally renowned research and hospital facility. Many of their patients are well-known public personalities. Sources both inside and outside have tried many times to obtain health information on these patients for malicious purposes. The hospital requires a patient information stored in cloud storage buckets, not leave the geographic areas in which the buckets are hosted. You need to ensure that information stored in cloud storage buckets in the Europe West region does not leave that area. What should you do? There are a couple of key points that stand out in the requirements, so let's just analyze those. One of course uh, that needs to be said is that in general treat all information as being sensitive, especially when it comes to things like uh, any kind of personal health information, personally identifiable information like credit card numbers and social security numbers, right? You always want to consider security and privacy fairly high. It does not apply only to celebrities, it applies to everybody. Then uh, sources both inside and outside have tried many times to obtain health information. So clearly this is um, a, a data set that is uh, highly valued and a lot of people are trying to uh, get their data. And they are expecting not only people outside the organization but also people inside the organization to behave maliciously. Right? Uh, maybe it's a disgruntled employee, maybe they've been bribed by somebody outside. Uh, or maybe it's just a case of misconfiguration, right? Accidentally, they have opened up uh, certain uh, storage buckets and data uh, that is uh, publicly accessible, right? So, and then anybody gets to copy the data. So whether it is uh, with malicious intent or accidental, we don't want this data going outside a particular region. And uh, that is the end goal for this question, that we have to stop data exfiltration from uh, the data in the uh, from the st uh, cloud storage buckets in the Europe West uh, region. Now, when working with these services like um, uh, cloud storage and BigQuery and others, what you will notice is that you can't set a firewall rule to say, "Hey, don't access this uh, particular endpoint." Right? Those services are managed by Google. Uh, they, it could be hosted at many locations, and you're not given an IP address to say. Uh, you know what, all data going from all machines uh, from this network to that should be blocked. And if you ever did that, right, it would mean that you wouldn't be, you wouldn't even be able to work with the data. So that kind of an approach where you're setting a firewall rule at the um, VM level or the network level is not going to work, right? Um, we need to be looking for a service that is provided by Google in this case uh, because they manage the services. So we have to see if there is something that suits uh, this requirement under those constraints. The first uh, option is uh, to encrypt the data in the application on-premises before the data is stored in the Europe West region. So in this case, before the data gets to even cloud storage, they're saying do a, uh, a one round of encryption and the data in uh, Google Cloud on cloud storage is automatically encrypted. But even otherwise, you want to say, you know what, we'll do an, our own encryption, right? So even if um, uh, somebody has access to that uh, cloud storage bucket, they wouldn't be able to read the data without these encryption keys. One problem with this is that encryp encrypting the data does not stop it from being copied, right? So you will have that data on uh, cloud storage and you can copy that data. It would still be encrypted, but you can still copy it out, right? So that would be uh, a partial point of failure, right? Because they might uh, attack with brute, brute force methods to say, you know, let's just crack the password on this. And maybe they can type, take the time to do it. Uh, but much bigger problem would be, would be that if insiders are the ones who are copying this data outside, they probably already have access to the encryption keys, right? Um, or they will be able to find it out. So just having it encrypted will not be secure uh, because, you know, eventually they'll either get the encryption keys or they'll be able to break it. Um, so for that reason, uh, we are uh, going to eliminate option A, right? Because it just does not uh, stop the uh, person from copying the data and they might also have the uh, encryption keys to decrypt it. So option A is out. 
Option C suggests that we assign the Identity and Access Management or IAM storage or object via role only to users and service accounts that need to use the data. So what they're say, saying in this case is, so there is a storage bucket, there is a data. Instead of giving permissions like re, uh, sorry, like uh, uh, write, delete, and uh, update, edit, just give the uh, users within the company only a, a object viewer role. Why wouldn't this work? One of course is that if they can view the data, they can copy it, right? They will be able to list the content, they will be able to download the content, they'll be able to copy it from storage bucket to storage bucket. So if there was a storage bucket where they have access to, they can say GSU till copy and then give uh, the source and destination, right? So if they have viewer uh, role, object viewer role um, on the source project, they will be able to write it to an other project where they, they have a storage uh, bucket, cloud storage bucket, where they have a write access, right? Uh, so, and they can create their own storage bucket with that uh, access, right? So it doesn't stop them uh, from taking this data out, right? They can copy it and then move it to uh, another bucket where they have write access. And since we are saying, at least for a few, few users, we will give them uh, object viewer role. Uh, since we also expect insiders to potentially steal the data, they might have been given the object viewer role. So that's enough for them to take this data out. And by itself, IAM does not have a way to restrict copying the data. They can say, you know what, they have permissions to read, write, edit, but then to say to copy, once they have a viewer role, that's enough, right? That's enough to move the data out or at least to copy the data out, even if they don't move it, right? They don't remove it after copying it, but copying is good enough for them. So option C is out. Next, uh, option D suggests that we create an access control list or ACL that limits access to the bucket to authorized users only and apply to the buckets in the Europe West 2 region. Now, this is not very different from option C. Similar to that, uh, it does not restrict the uh, authorized users from copying the data, right? If they've got access to the data, they can take it anywhere else, right? They can copy it to another storage bucket by using GSU to copy and then uh, uh, put it into a different destination uh, storage bucket. So option D also similar to option C will not be suitable and we can eliminate that. Option B suggests that we enable virtual private network service controls and create a service perimeter around the cloud storage resources. So clearly this is a service provided by a solution or a product provided by Google itself. And we have to see if this works well for the requirement that we have. Um, what is the requirement? If there is a project A and there is data in that, we want to be able to restrict it from being copied to another uh, projects, another storage bucket, right? Another project storage bucket. There might be certain cases where we want to say, we want to allow copying the data from this storage bucket to another storage bucket, let's say in project B, right? But um, it should not go out to project X. So from either of A or B, it should not be going to project X. By default, there is no restriction for this, right? If you've got access to uh, both of these storage buckets, um, you can run a command say from here like gsutil copy and you say gsutil copy whatever file or the full uh, the entire bucket itself you know you can do a sync uh, of this bucket to other places so you can say gsutil copy or rsync and uh, give this as a source and this or this as a destination and it will copy to both places what we then want is to not have this happen right we still want to be allowed we still want to allow this because it's a trusted project but we don't want to allow this and we have to look for an option that allows us to set a perimeter among these uh, projects or between or uh, that includes both of these projects but excludes the untrusted project so on this while preparing for this question i realized that uh, you know i also didn't fully understand the um, the capabilities of the vpc service controls and the uh, the perimeter so um, what I did was a hands-on exercise in lab and I have recorded this as a video. So I would strongly recommend that you see this video uh, on the process of how to set up a, a service perimeter and how to restrict uh, data moving from uh, cloud storage buckets among these projects. Okay? So uh, there's a detailed video there. Please do go see that. But for the purposes of this uh, video and answering this question, let me just give you the summary of it. The way you would do this is to go to security 
then within that VPC service controls. And the next step, you have to choose the organization where you want to create the, uh, the service perimeter. Remember, this is not being done at a project level, but this is being done at an organization level where you can add different projects uh, as part of the service perimeter, right? So you need to also have certain permissions, uh, certain uh, you know privileges and rules that allow you to do this, right? Um, and you can look up the documentation on that. Once you um, do that, you can then name the perimeter with whatever you want. I made a small mistake in the original thing where I've uh, done a hyphen, it should be an underscore. And the next step, you can choose the projects that you want uh, to be want added as part of the perimeter. In the first step, what I did was I just added project A, but I could have also added project B. Right? And at a later step, I do add project B. Um, as you can see, the project that we want to exclude in this case is project X, and that is not a part of this, right? So if I had only project A, it should uh, not allow me to copy data between project A and project X because it's not part of the perimeter here. Right? In the next step, what I can do is to restrict the uh, services where the service perimeter, uh, these VPC service controls will be applied. For our use case, we only need it for the cloud storage API and that is the only one I select. Right? But there are uh, others like say BigQuery and PubSub and many others. right? So depending on what is the data that you want um, control that you want to stop any kind of exfiltration on, you would add those APIs in this step. After I've done that, um, when I try to do a copy of a sensitive file, right? So this is GAC will copy from project A, which is a source, and we're trying to copy a sensitive file to project X, which is an untrusted project, right? And what a service perimeter does is to automatically uh, deny that deny that data transfer that copying of the data because it is prohibited by the um, service control policy right so this is uh, done for you um, by just setting the perimeter and any person who's trying to copy the data out right uh, accidentally with malicious intent or because it came from uh, in a, a badly configured cloud storage bucket all of that will be stopped by this uh, Google product, which is the VPC service controls. So uh, to answer this question, um, there is a way using the uh, 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 VPN service controls, uh, the VPC service controls to uh, set a service perimeter for the cloud storage API. So right? there are others also supported. In this case, we want to stop data going out from the cloud storage bucket. And therefore, this is the one we've set. So any data that we try to copy will be denied, right? And that's what we saw in the uh, when we try to do the GS Util copy. So considering that option B would be the right one to choose for this question. Right? Again, I would strongly recommend that you watch that video where I go through the lab, right? The hands-on exercise of creating the perimeter, defining his projects, and uh, initially copying the data without the perimeter, which it allows. And then after that, when I try to uh, copy the data after creating the service perimeter, it does not allow me to, right? So uh, do check that out. Um, in the final uh, list, the uh, right option in this case to choose would be option B to enable the service controls and create a service perimeter around the projects or the projects where you have the storage bucket that we want to restrict and that we don't want copied uh, outside that region, right? So um, option B would be the right one. If you find these videos useful, consider supporting me on Patreon or buy me a coffee. Also, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more learning videos on Awesome GCP.